uh, with a small group um, executing science and a mission, but at the same time we're working on those expeditionary skills, uh, living and working together as a team, which are a, a really important uh, aspect to human spaceflight. Check of the clock, two hours, 13 minutes and counting until liftoff of NASA's Boeing crew flight test. Again, just want to spend another moment to call attention to the left side of the screen here and just that beautiful shot that we have of Starliner and Atlas V. Thank you for bringing it up full screen because it is really a great shot. Nicole just turned around. <laughs> it's directly behind us here at the host desk. Just to take this moment in. It's absolutely beautiful. Sunset happening just about 20 minutes ago here on Florida Space Coast. I mentioned this before that things right now are looking good. The pad team had until an hour and 55 minutes to ingress the crew. All right, there we go. We just heard that calm communication from Sunny there. Looks like she was maybe troubleshooting a little something there with her suit. Um, and so again, that's why we have some additional time built into the schedule so that any type of uh, issue, we have time to work through that and we don't feel rushed really in the process. You know, you wanna make sure you have everything right. Safety is at the forefront of everybody's mind. Copy, let me know when you're ready to do contact. Tech five, you are now on air to ground one. POT, tech five on air to ground one. How do you read me? Okay. Uh, I do not hear you. Do you hear me? Comtech? Air to ground one, I got you loud and clear. PLT. Copy, copy. I got you loud and clear on air to ground one. Let's go air to ground two with Comtech again. Pass, tech five. Air to ground one is one channel, one way of communicating. Air to ground two is a secondary line as well. Again, you've heard uh, our commentators mentioning that they're monitoring, listening to the launch teams uh, who are working this mission. We have some loops up publicly for you guys to listen in and to track how the countdown is progressing. And then there are some other side channels that a lot of work is also done in the up. background as well. Starliner, it's Houston. We copy gross suit leak check complete on the PLT, and I have you loud and clear, Sunny, here on air to ground one. Yep, I got you loud and clear as well. All right, two good call outs there. Successful communication check with Houston between Sunny, as well as a good check of her suit, making sure that it holds pressure as expected. L minus two hours, 10 minutes. ECS, Elsie. Tech five, you're back on air to ground one. ECS? All right, PLT, so we confirm that you guys are on air to minute. Roger. PLT, you can open your visor now. All right, with Sunny opening her visor after a, su a successful. And PLT, perform comp check on ICOM with CDR. That's a command to do a communication check between Sunny and Butch. And while they do that, why don't we hear more about Sunny's journey to this moment right now? Exploration is curiosity. It's asking the question of why. It's taking that next step every time we do something for the first time. We're expanding our knowledge. My name is Sunny Williams, and I'm the pilot for NASA's Boeing Crew Flight Test Mission to the International Space Station. I feel really lucky to have grown up in a small town outside of Boston, Needham, Massachusetts. It was a great town because we were able to ride our bikes everywhere we went. My brother, sister, and I, we were all swimmers. And it was just a great childhood. My dad was a doctor and... 
Professor Tender of Science Research. We are a strange family who had pictures and diagrams of brains on our dining room table. My older brother went to the Naval Academy. I started researching a little bit and I thought, well, what the heck, I'll try this out. And when I went, I found that I really loved it. Teamwork, followership, leadership, those opportunities that we had right from the very beginning and to accomplish something a little bit bigger than yourself. And I think that paved the way. United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's launch pad 41. As you can see, we still have a pad team member in there. Looks like they're still helping either Sunny with something or again, just readying the spacecraft for launch. You know, it's interesting because the spacecraft is made for microgravity. And so actually you can't stand on the floor of the spacecraft. And so there's um, some special uh, flooring pieces that are, that are installed so that the uh, pad team can walk around without damaging any of the components of the spacecraft and help mm. get the astronauts uh, strapped in. And so I know as one of their uh, final checks, they'll remove that uh, specialized flooring uh, and check the uh, configuration inside of the spacecraft um, as you mentioned, to get everything out, that that doesn't need to go to space. Oh, there it is. It looks like they have taken the narwhal out and they are finding a place to tether it. Maybe I'm just imagining it because I can't really see Sunny's face, but she looks happy <laughs> to see the narwhal out. Again, a, a special uh, zero gravity indicator that she uh, picked with her Check niece five, and nephew. Pad, you are now on air to ground one. Copy. Starliner crew, is there anything else you need help with before we leave and close the hatch? Waiting to hear if Butch and Sonny say anything over the loops. All right, style on the crew. It's been an honor to stop in. Not my crew, but my friends. I'm a safe flight. See you up there. I love that. 
Sounds like strapping everything went well. And I, you weren't imagining, I did see a smile on Sonny's face uh, and Perfect. I can see Norval uh, tethered there in the middle. And again, I love that comm check again to say they're friends. Dee, you've been saying this uh, throughout the broadcast really, but they've, Butch and Sonny, have been working so closely with everyone who is needed to make this mission possible that they kind of all just feel like family. Absolutely, you know, we've been working with them for years. They've been a part of, just as Nicole mentioned, all of the processes, all of the training, um, making sure that the spacecraft works as it is supposed to. And of course, now they're both on this flight test where they're going to uh, do this mission and confirm that. So, um, you know, we have gotten very, very close with them. And this is an exciting moment for us to, s to see this and um, looking forward to seeing them lift off and begin this mission. You know, it's interesting because you think of, you know, Butch and Sonny, of course, are the astronauts on top of the rocket right now and the ones going to space, but they really do represent, you know, that huge family of NASA and Boeing and all everybody that's worked so hard uh, to get AC. to this point. Go ahead, AC. Okay, evaluating the uh, uh, SRV, we're most likely uh, uh, getting above the uh, call uh, cycles of this valve. Uh, we still have two uh, plus hours to go, so... Um, most likely exceeding the uh, the call value, uh, we do not have a path to proceed uh, uh, further at this point. Roger. So uh, at this point, your recommendation is to uh, secure operations for today. That is correct. Roger. LD LC on channel one. Yes, sir. Um, LD concurs with that. Roger. Uh, flight and slick channel one. Flight here. Slick's on channel one. Yeah, Roger. Uh, so the engineering team has evaluated um, the vehicle is not uh, in a configuration where we can proceed with uh, flight today. So uh, we're going to initiate uh, our scrub and recycle operation. Roger. Flight count. Roger. And if you're just joining us, I'll look at the clock well, here. personnel, this is uh, LC on channel one. Let's turn to Page 187, scrub crew egress operations. Again, the clock two hours ahead of what we were targeting, a 10.34 and 14 second p.m. Eastern time liftoff but you just heard from the launch team that we are scrubbing. OSM, LC. OSM, go ahead, sir. Establish the BDA roadblocks and open the flight hazard area. Roger. All personnel on channel one will be starting an estimated 65 minute hold at this time for flight crew egress. All systems maintain T minus four configuration. As we hear some communication between team members, let's get it over to ULA's Dylan Rice to walk us through what we know so far and what we can expect moving forward today. Thanks, Megan. So um, the team has uh, had some observations on a, uh, uh, an oxygen uh, relief valve on our Centaur second stage. And uh, the team is just not comfortable with the uh, the signatures that they're seeing, the response out of that out of that valve, and so out of an abundance of caution, uh, we are not going to um, continue with our launch operations today. And uh, as you heard, uh, the chief launch conductor Doug Lebo call the uh, the team there and have the team prepare for for scrub Starliner operations and uh, 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 to prep for removal of the crew from Starliner. Uh, so next steps, the uh, the team is going to be maintaining the uh, configuration of the rocket and uh, we'll yeah. we'll begin the process of uh, of uh, egressing the crew. And uh, once once the uh, crew is um, egressed and the the uh, blue team has uh, safely left the pad, uh, at that point we'll begin. Um, detanking the uh, rocket and uh, securing for the evening so that teams can uh, continue to review data and uh, troubleshoot the um, signature noted with the um, valve on board Centaur. Channel one. Disappointing, Go ahead, sir. 
Sunny yes, sir. So uh, you, you may have heard on Channel 1, we're standing down for today. So uh, starting to initiate getting the vehicle in configuration to uh, egress lead crew. Roger, welcome. So as Fane Sunny even said, you know, nothing special about this date on the calendar. We will go when we're ready. Not today, but we'll try this again. So a lot of what's going to be happening now is sort of what we've seen happen up to this point, just in reverse. Right, and again, and this decision was uh, not made lightly, but uh, really out of an abundance of caution. You know, the uh, we, we say that the uh, rocket business is a is a business of uh, 10 million details, and uh, only when uh, all 10 million details are are uh, correct and where you want them to be, do you um, do you let your rocket fly. So. Uh, for today, we're going to go back and uh, uh, slick LC check channel out. one. LC, you have slick. Yeah, Roger. Um, so it, I'll uh, rely on you, uh, timing wise, uh, to let me know when you're ready for the uh, CTV convoy to return to pad. Yep, I was working that right now. Roger. So again, for now, we'll. Um, We'll be maintaining the configuration of the launch vehicle until the uh, crew and the blue team have uh, exited the area. And uh, at that point, we'll um, begin detanking and um, securing the launch vehicle for the evening. So for now, I think uh, we'll turn it back over to Megan at the host desk. Thank you, Don. Again, just a recap for folks about four minutes ago the launch team decided to stand down from the launch attempt today. Dylan noting for us that uh, the ULA folks and the launch team, they decided to, out of an abundance of caution, to stand down because they saw um, something off nominal 